Hi and welcome to the next video in the RHCSA video series. Today's video is on configure time service clients. So essentially we're going to be using the date command and the hardware clock command, time date, CTL and NTP to synchronize our time in various different manners. So the first command I will cover is the date command. Um, date command uh, doesn't isn't really using useful configuring the time, but I cover it anyway because it's quite a useful command uh, to cover because um, it's used a lot in scripts. Because um, you may use the date command to then uh, print out the exact date, but you can actually configure the fields you want to have. So you can have um, I just want the particular uh, current time, um, so 10 o'clock at night or whatever that's running the script. Or you could have the um, date and the time in a particular format so you can use it for log files so the log files don't overwrite the same ones for example you can do date and then you do a plus and then you can then use that to format it so you can use the percent sign and then it will there's various variables so I think it is from memory it's uh, day and then it will be a month then it will be a year. So you've got a day, month, year. So that's, yeah, so it's 18th of the 3rd, 2020, which is the day, month, year. So we can also add on to that. So we could do, say, for example, we're doing it for a log file. We do hyphen, percent sign. I'll try and get it right this time. Percent sign. Um, we do um, the clock time. So we do so current minute, so hour hour minutes and seconds there we go so we could have a log file so we could have something like that as a three log file so you could have um touch uh log and then have this in tactics If we're doing ls, you've then got a log with the time. So we can clean it up a little bit. We could do a log hyphen So you can see there it's log and then the date and then the time dot log. And so you can use that in a script. So every time you run the script, it will log it for the date and time and it won't overwrite the same script. So just the back ticks there will just literally same, uh, run that as a command essentially. So it runs the date command and then uh, with all these variables to get all the, the correct time as you want it. So obviously you can go and uh, get um, the different fields if you want. If you want just a particular time of execution, you can have that. But uh, in this case, I use it the most common way people generally use it. The next one is the HW clock. And um, this one's generally a quick one to set the hardware clock. So generally the hardware clock might be correct and the system clock may be wrong. So you can actually set the system clock to the current hardware clock. So to do that, you just do hardware clock minus S and then that will automatically update it to the exactly correct as per the system clock. You can also do the inverse if you wanted to, which is just minus W which then sets the, syst uh, the hardware clock to the system clock. And you won't see much change there because it's at the system clock level. Cool. So that's a pretty simple one. There's not much to it. The next one is time date DTL. This is the, probably the most important part. So you can run that empty um, and it'll give you the current time. It'll give you all the various different time zones. But I can see that I'm, uh, I live in Australia, so I've got an Australian Melbourne time zone current set. And you can see the uh, the current um, time difference. Um, you've got local time, and you've got the UTC time, Universal Standard Time. Um, it's all set there, and you can see it's the system clock is synchronized. And do I use NTP? So NTP uh, is Network Time Protocol. So it allows you to go and fetch the current time from the internet. And you can see currently I don't have that in uh, active. So that actually would be something too good to enable. Um, and there may come up an exam to ask you to enable that, so it's certainly something to learn. So you can manually set, uh, first we'll just manually set the time, so we can do time date CTL, 
set hyphen time and you can set date we can do set uh, time and then date so 2020 uh, 03 18 it sets the time and then you can set an actual clock time so we can say uh, i don't know let's do 2020 22 uh, let's do 43 and, zero, zero. and it's set the time you can see the times reflected automatically at the top there as well <clears throat> okay cool so if you do a time date ctl you can see the times uh, reverted back uh, luckily enough it's actually the exact same second <laughs> I've run the command. Coincidence, honest. Um, okay, so now we can do a list of time zones. So we can see all the different time zones. And then we can change our time zone if we wanted to by just doing a, let's just to clear here, uh, time, date, ETL, and then set hyphen time zone, and I'm Australia hyphen Melbourne. And that'll set the time zone to the correct time zones you've set. The next one I think is to use uh, to set up NTP. So time date CTL and we could say set hyphen NTP yes and we should start using the NTP almost instantly. We can double check that. We can see that it's still not synchronized. So um, the next thing to do um, is you want to uh, use NTP. So as of Red Hat 8, uh, we no, use it, no longer use the NTP daemon or NTP D. Uh, it's now using Crony. So let's see if Crony is installed. Okay, let's check DNF install Crony. Okay, it's already installed. Okay, so let's start it. System CTL start. Spell it right. Okay, let's do a status. It's loaded. Cool. And let's do a system CTL enable. Okay, let's see if there's any uh, see if there's any servers configured. Okay, let's do a VR on this. Let's have a look what's configured. So for NTP, you'll need to have um, servers configured for it to actually pull um, the server list out. So use the public pools from uh, pull to NDP your project. That looks good. So that looks like it's already got all the servers already configured. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so now we can do an exit. And if we do a crony C, and in sources, we can see the time is now is syncing. And you can see the last received time, the last sample, and you can see um, how many microseconds it's in or out. So it's pretty accurate um, timing think, uh, option. So yeah, Crony is pretty simple as you can see. So you've just got the entry, you can have um, You've got that crony.conf to set any servers in there. So you've got, you can actually set your own ones in here if you wanted to. So you could have um, server, I know, uh, IP address 12, 127.28.31.22. Uh, and that will actually go to that server to receive um, its time. Uh, so obviously if you have like an Active Directory controller or something like that in a network, you'll use that to get time rather than going outbound or NTP because you want to keep that uh, synchronized. But that's pretty much it. So that will set the time now. So we have always the correct time. Um, we can do, do the uh, date command now. 
and it's correct. Um, so yeah, there's not really much, too much to it. The uh, crony um, solution will start up at, on start because we did the enable. Um, we've got the servers already configured as we um, as we saw. Uh, it's pre-configured by the system. But obviously, they may have a step to configure your own one. So you just literally add the entry server space and then the server's IP address. So something like server IP address so 172.28.18.324 for example and that would be a server to go and get the uh, address and you then want to comment out this entry so you just do a, a hash on that one and you've got to move the entry and you just save the file and then restart the crony service system ctl restart and then just do a crony sources and you can see it's trying to reach out to that address now and it won't have much luck because that server doesn't actually exist so I'll just quickly revert that and to show you that it works and we can just remove that entry and restart the service and do the crony services and we've got some addresses because it's a pool we're actually putting out you'll get different addresses pretty regularly regularly as it, it um, iterates through a long list of different servers that provide that NTP service uh, yeah uh, that pretty much concludes the video um, I hope that's been useful once again uh, like if you enjoyed the video subscribe to my channel to get more content um, yeah click the notification bell if you um, as of my use my uh, video uh, uploading is pretty, pretty sporadic at times. Um, yeah, I've put on my on here on screen now um, the intro information about the Sophos um, home antivirus. It's it's a fantastic antivirus for Windows machines. Uh, you've got the uh, hosting. You've got web web hosting as well as um, VPS. If you're interested in that, um, it got my T public for any merchandise. If you're interested in that, and finding my Kofu page. Um, and also all the links for this is is just below um, all the best thanks